In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your 3D printing time lapses from looking like this to this by just using some small 3D printed parts and a trigger release system. If you're anything like me, you absolutely love seeing these 3D printing time lapses where you just see this model grow from the bed. And it's actually pretty simple to do. All they're doing there is they're basically getting the camera to take a picture between every single layer change. Now there's many ways of doing this. You can go ahead and wire something straight into the perfect limit switch position, or you can go ahead and use OctoPrint, but I wanted something very simple, physical, almost foolproof. And this is why I'm gonna go with a trigger release system. So what exactly do you need to make this work? Well, you need your 3D printer, of course, you need a camera and you need a trigger release system. Now your camera can be a phone because there are Bluetooth and wired trigger release systems. And of course, if you have a separate camera out and about, you're gonna to have to find your own little trigger release. Some of them are wireless, some of them are wired, but they're all pretty simple. Now that we know what we need, we need to figure out how to go ahead and place our trigger release system close enough to our 3D print head that when it goes over to it, it doesn't smash into it, but also close enough that it doesn't lose 3D printing space. Now over on my CR10S, I have these two bolts perfectly positioned to go ahead and model something up to hold my trigger. So right there, I went ahead and modeled this up. If you wanna see how I went ahead and modeled this within Blender, I have a link down in the description. Now, your printer might not have a perfect spot like this. It might not have a place to go ahead and put a permanent fixture to go ahead and do 3D prints. Well, for that, I would advise using a friction arm. Now, friction arms are pretty interesting because they can move in any sort of way, but they have this lovely little tight thing. You can go ahead and tighten it up and now it will no longer move. Now do keep in mind that adding a friction arm directly onto the Z axis is probably not the best thing out there because this is gonna go ahead and add a whole bunch of weight onto one side of the Z axis. and I can't guarantee the results that you're gonna get there. So I would really advise that you try and find a perfect spot for a little fixture, or maybe if you have T-slot aluminum on your 3D printer, maybe go ahead and create something that fits within that T-slot aluminum right there. So now that I have this bracket in place, you can see that I'm just a couple of millimeters away from actually being able to trigger it. So what I go ahead here is I model this teeny tiny little cone thing that I can just go ahead and super glue onto my trigger. Now I went ahead and used a bit of accelerant with my super glue, even though knowing it's got some acetone in it. So it did melt the PLA a little bit, but a little bit of Sharpie and that fixes everything up. Okay, now we're pretty much at the home stretch, but we're about to go ahead and tackle something that I'm a little bit scared to mention, G-code. Now I do mean this, a huge word of warning here. We're about to go into G-code and G-code is a very quick and easy way to break your 3D printer. Please, please, please do not just copy and paste G-code into your 3D print commands and understand what's going on. I'm gonna do my absolute best to show you the G-code that I use for my CR10S, and then you can go ahead and learn from this and then do some baby tests to go ahead and figure out exactly what's going on here. Because when I first did this, I almost broke my 3D printer. I felt like going ahead and scraping my nozzle across my glass and also across my steel clips, wrecking two of my brass nozzles. Anyway, with that huge word of warning out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the G-code. So here we are within my slicer of choice, which is Prusa Slicer. Now, if you don't have Prusa Slicer and you have use a different slicer, I'm sure a quick Googling of custom G-code within your slicer is gonna show you a solution. But here we are within Prusa, and this is the G-code that we need to put in. I'm gonna go over to printer settings, and here where it says custom G-code, here is where you're gonna go ahead and put it in. You can put it in the before layer change G-code, but I've gone for the after layer change as there is pretty much where I'm getting my best results. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So here it is. First, let's do a little bit of uh, learning what the G-code is. So first of all, we've got a G91, which means use relative position. So the best way to explain this is basically if the 3D printer is right here and I say move, 10 millimeters on the X is going to move 10 millimeters on the X. 
However, if you have it in absolute position mode and you say, hey, go to X10, instead of moving 10 millimeters, it's going to go where X equals 10. I hope that makes sense. Then we have a G1, which means move, and a G4, which means weight. And this here is the code that we have. So first and foremost, we go ahead into our relative position mode and we do a G1 on our E, which is our extruder, minus eight F2000, which means retract minus eight millimeters at 2000 millimeters a minute. So we're doing a great big retraction to make sure that we don't get any blobs left or any stringing going on. Then I go ahead and do another move on our Z. So we've got G1, Z2 at the same speed going upwards, making sure that our printer is well out the way before we do any movement. Then we're gonna go back into our absolute position mode. And don't worry about these numbers right this minute because I'm gonna show you how I went about getting these numbers after we go through the code. So we're gonna go and move our head, so our X, our X gantry that has our extruder, all the way to the right. You might have to be going to the left, it all depends on your 3D printer. But as you see, this is a new one to us, this is our F. I'm going by the travel speed that I've already designated and timesing that by 60, so 60 times our travel speed. So I'm moving that all the way to the right and then I'm doing the same to our Y, which is the bed, and that's it. Now be careful, if you can, put these in the wrong order and that's how I went ahead and dragged my printer head right across my clips. So big word of warning there, just be careful here. That is where a lot of problems can happen very quickly. And also have you seen that I haven't gone all the way to the right here. I haven't, I've got close and that's due to the acceleration and we'll talk about that in a little moment. So then I do a G4 to wait and make sure that the movement up above is done. And then here we do another G1 on the X, just five millimeters. So we're getting ready to press the trigger. Now, here's the key thing. I'm doing this very slowly. And the reason why is due to acceleration and jerk, you can overshoot this. And the first time I had this, I had this go straight to 305 and I was overshooting my 305 every single time I'm smashing straight into my trigger. So be careful there. Stop first, then move a little bit, then wait for that movement to be done. That's this G4 here. And then do one more to just go and move that last little millimeter to go ahead and trigger your shutter release system. Then we're going to do a G4 P200, which means wait for 0.2 of a second. Then we're going to do a G1 and go back off the trigger to let the, release the trigger. And then we're doing a wait. We're waiting for 1.5 seconds to make sure that the picture is taken with nothing moving. Then we're going back into our relative position, bringing the Z axis back down so it's getting ready to print. And then we do a G90 to return to the absolute position. Now the keen eye of you might have realized, hey, what's going on? You did a massive retraction up here and then you haven't gone ahead and primed the head once again. Now, this is a weird thing. I found that for me, I didn't need to reprime my head. And in fact, that's how I was getting the best results. However, you might need to reprime your head. So you might need to put in something like this, which is a G1 E 7.9. So I'm just saying, hey, extrude 7.9. So you're right there, ready to go. At a little bit of a slower speed, getting ready to continue 3D printing. But once again, this is very much in your hands to experiment, understand what is going on here, because this can and will break your 3D printer if you don't understand what is going on. I can't stress this enough because I almost did it three times in this project. So true, do your test maybe in the middle of the print bed before you go ahead and commit it to the extremes of your print bed first. All right, now let's go ahead and show you how I got my numbers. Just before I share how I got my trigger position location, I would love it if you consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon as all I'm doing here on Maker Tales is sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So to get that exact position, it's relatively simple. All I did was auto home my 3D printer, so it's at the zero, zero, zero. And then what I did is I went into my settings, 
moved up my Z just a little bit and then moved all the way along on my X, keeping a note of the numbers that were coming up. I found that when I got to 305, I was just, just about to hit my trigger. And then I found that that last little millimeter between 305 and 306, that was actually triggering of my release. So that's exactly what I did. As you can see within my code, I went to 295 because that is a good distance away that the acceleration wasn't gonna go ahead and smash into the side of it. Then I move really slowly that last little centimeter and then I do that last little millimeter and then I pull back and that's it. With all those numbers now put into the G code, that's how I went about getting this perfect time-lapse setup. Now that you have this set up, you can go ahead and create great time lapses like these right here. And there you have it, that's how to go about creating incredible time lapses of absolutely anything that you 3D print. Of course, some of you have a couple more questions, like how exactly did you turn all these photos into a video? How did you do that zoom in thing? How do you stabilize the footage? Well, I use DaVinci Resolve, and the short answer is basically within Resolve, you can import images and instantly it gets turned into a clip. And there, there's a lovely stabilize. And then I just use a couple of keyframes on the zooming in and the positioning. If you want a video on this, just let me know down in the comments. A huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And I absolutely love having your support behind me. If you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. Don't forget that we have a Discord community and that's linked down in the description. Thanks for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.